I'll get you to turn to two places, please. First Timothy and Second Timothy. All right, First Timothy uh, will be in First Timothy chapter four, and we'll be in Second Timothy. chapter 2 and uh, we'll have a quick little Bible study really tonight and uh, then I'll try and make some application at the end and so um, let's have a word of prayer ask the Lord to help us and then we'll just get straight into it Heavenly Father we're thankful Lord for your kindness and your grace thankful Lord for the opportunity to be able to be here and uh, be involved Lord thank you for each and every soul that's here And Lord, we just pray, we ask in Jesus' name, would you be pleased just to take the word of God and minister it to each and every heart as you see fit. I I ask, Lord, that you'd just be pleased to fill me with the Holy Spirit and help me tonight. Lord, I need your help, and we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, We'll start in 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. uh, And we'll read just two verses, and then we'll come back and cover a few more in a minute. 2 Timothy um, chapter 2, is that what I said? Well, if you get on the same page as me, it would really help me out. (laughs) So listen to me, all right, and I'll try and get it right. 2 Timothy chapter 2, and we're just going to start in verse 20, and we're going to read verse 20 and 21. But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, some to honour, some to dishonour. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honour, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared under every good work. Uh, Really what I want to do, I want to run over a little bit of what we spoke about this morning in uh, our time of discussion in the panel, and uh, mention a couple of other things, expound upon that a little bit, and then make some application at the end. Uh, The scripture here in this passage talks of us being the vessel, and we spoke about what a vessel is this morning. A vessel is something that contains something. Uh, It may be a barrel, it may be a cup, it may be a dish, uh, it may be a bottle, whatever it is, it contains something. And uh, when God saves us, What he wants to do is he wants to contain us. He wants to fill us with himself uh, so that he might be able to use us. And in a house, in a great house, you'll find all kinds of different vessels. And we talked about that this morning. But in this passage of scripture, the implication is made that the master of the house only uses a certain vessel. He only uses the vessel of honor. The, the vessel of honour that's sanctified and that's meat. And if you think about a big house, a grand house, uh, 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 the master of that house doesn't just use any vessel. The master of the house doesn't grab a mop bucket. Now, that's a vessel, but he's not going to grab a mop bucket and mop the house. Uh, no, he's, he uses the vessels of honour, as, as Pastor Skelly mentioned this morning, uh, a, a good cup for our coffee and that sort of thing. The master of the house... He's going to use the vessels of honour for a specific purpose and a specific reason. Now, our master, the application here, and our master is the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord Jesus Christ wants to fill you with the Holy Spirit. But the reality is, he's not going to fill you with the Holy Spirit if you're full of yourself, uh, if you're full of sin, iniquity, and things that are displeasing to him. He's only going to fill certain vessels. Now, notice verse 21. If a man therefore purge himself, uh, if we're going to be a a vessel of honour, a vessel that's meet and sanctified and fitting and ready and easily to be used by God, we must purge ourselves. Uh, No one's going to, no one can purge you for you. The pastor is not responsible for purging you. He's responsible to preach the word to you, but you're responsible to purge yourself. 
You're not responsible for purging the person in front of you or the person behind you, but you are responsible to purge yourself. Now, how are we going to purge? And the word purge means to cleanse thoroughly. Uh, we're not talking about a surface clean. We're talking a, about a deep clean. You, you know when uh, mum says clean your room, you go in and do a, a clean. And she comes in and she inspects it on the level of a deep clean. God's, he's not playing games with you and me. He's, he doesn't want a surface clean. He's not looking for an outward clean. He's looking for a deep cleanse. And what happens is a lot of us, we just get satisfied with just a, a shallow outward cleanse. That's just not going to get it done. That's not what God's interested in. Have a look in 1 Timothy, if you would please. 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4. And notice, if you would please, I mentioned this this morning in our discussion. It says in verse 7, 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 7, but refuse profane and old wives' fables and exercise thyself rather under godliness. For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable under all things, having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. Exercise thyself. Purge thyself. Exercise thyself. Exercise thyself. The word exercise in a general sense is to labor, it's to work, it's to exert yourself. It's hard work. If you're going to be godly, if you're going to be a vessel that's meet for the master's use, that the Holy Ghost is going to fill and use you, it's going to take hard work. You're not going to get it just being lazy. You're going to have to work hard, you're going to have to labor, you're going to have to exercise. It also carries the idea of training or something being a habitual activity. The practice or the performance of religion in this context. If we're going to exercise ourselves under godliness, we must exercise, we must perform, we must practice Christianity. Christianity is not to be just merely professed. It is actually to be exercised, performed and practiced. But if all you're going to do is profess Christianity and not practice and perform Christianity, God will not and cannot fill you and use you. It's just not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. Anyone can profess Anyone can talk a good game. Talk's cheap, folks. God's not interested in cheap talk. He's looking for action and exercise. You know, in, in a physical sense, we, we start off at the beginning of the year and we say we're going to do this and we make New Year's resolutions and we're going to, go to the, we're going to get fit and we're going to do this and we're going to do that and we talk this big game. But then when it comes to the crunch and getting up at 4 o'clock in the morning, we just don't do it. We do the same thing in Christianity as well. We sing the songs, we talk a good game, but when it comes to exercising ourselves under godliness, it's just too hard. Just too hard. But uh, if, if we're going to be a vessel, we're going to be a vessel that's meat for the master's use, it's going to take exercise and hard work. Go back with me, if you would please, to 2 Timothy. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2. And I just want to show you some exercises. You know, we, we, we saw some uh, exercise tonight, uh, farmers, uh, farmers carries, and you go to the gym, you do all sorts of exercise. When you go to the gym and you're seeking to be fit, uh, you know, you don't go to the gym and just curl. Uh, you end up like Popeye and skinny legs. You know, you're supposed to be balanced in your exercise routine, and so it is with godly exercise, it's supposed to be balanced. You don't want to get singly focused on one thing. So let me show you some godly exercises here in, in the context of our verse here in and around uh, verse 20 and verse 21 in being a vessel under honour. Uh, and this was mentioned, Pastor Byer mentioned this, first exercise is verse 15, study. You will not, you, you cannot exercise yourself under godliness if you are not a student of the Bible. To be a student of the Bible is hard work, and if you're lazy, you won't be one. 
I'm not meaning to be hard with you tonight. I don't mean to be hard. I'm not meaning to be aggressive. Sometimes I come across that way. I'm just passionate about what I'm saying, and I want you to get it. I'm trying to help you. If you're lazy, you won't be godly. Because being godly is hard work. Because your flesh doesn't want to be godly. Your flesh is ungodly. It always will be ungodly. And you're going to have to work hard against your flesh. And if you're lazy, you'll just be ungodly. You will not be godly. First exercise is study. And we're just, I'm going to mention them quickly. Don't have time to draw out on it. You know what studying is. You're just going to have to spend time, spend time in the book. Just open your Bible up. Come on, just get out of bed. Just put it down. If it wasn't so expensive, I'd just throw it for the sake of the illustration. <laughs> hey, you waste too much time on it. Spend more time in the Bible. Be a student of the Bible. Exercise yourself under godliness. Get in the book. Get in the book. Second exercise, and this is all part of purging yourself, okay? We're talking about purging yourself. How am I going to purge myself? How am I going to be fit? How am I going to exercise myself under godliness? Get in the book, study the book. Notice verse 16. Oh, now I've lost my page. Verse 16, second exercise, shun. Now I, I get accused and our church gets accused and you may have got accused of shunning people. You ever get accused, well, that church, I'm not going down there, they shun people. Now look, I'm not talking about having a bad attitude. I'm not talking about being a brawler and being aggressive and being mean. But listen to me. This, this, your Bible says, shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase under more ungodliness. Notice verse 17. For their word will eat as doth a canker of whom is, and he names some people that they know. Hymenaeus and Philetus. How are you going to shun vain babbling? You need to shun Hymenaeus and Philetus. Well, that, that's, that doesn't sound very Christian. We're talking about some godly exercises and we're talking about you being godly and if you're going to be godly, you need to be careful about the people you hang around. You, you can't hang around bad influences and you not be influenced badly. Time and time again, you hear, well, I'm just trying to be a good influence on them. You won't be. You may mean well, you, it's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. And I, again, I'm not, you, you don't have to be mean about it. You don't have to be rude about it. You don't have to be aggressive about it. You don't have to be divisive about it. But you do need to be smart. You do need to be intelligent. You do need to be observant. And you can be gracious and you can be kind, but you can deliberately not put yourself in the company of, company of some people. Is that fair enough? Second exercise is shun. Third exercise, notice it if you would please, verse 19 is depart. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. So if I'm going to exercise myself under godliness, first exercise is study. Second exercise is shun. Third exercise is depart. Depart from iniquity, depart from ungodliness, depart from, un from lawlessness and sin and things that God sees as, as filthy, as dirty, as wrong. You, you're going to have to, you're gonna have to see things how God sees them. How am I going to do that? Get in the book. See, it starts with studying the Bible. If you don't spend time in the Bible, you don't know what God's thinking. But if you stay in the Bible, God can tell you, you get around something, you're studying your Bible, you're reading your Bible, God says, you know, uh, that, uh, that app you have on your phone or that this or that company or that movie or this music, that career, God can speak to you through his word. It's a living book and he wants, it's, it's his love letter to you. He wants to speak to you through it, but if you don't read it, he can't speak to you. And he'll tell you ab about the things that you need to depart from. They're not leaving you. you. You hear people say, well, well, I'll just, you know, I'm just biding my time. They're not going. 
you weren't told just to wait till they leave. They're not leaving. You have, to, you have to withdraw yourself. You have to depart. Well, well, they'll talk bad about me. Let them talk. Depart well. Depart graciously. Be sweet. But there's some things you may have to uh, uh, remove yourself from. Depart. So third exercise, depart. But notice verse 22. Flee. Flee what? Youthful lusts. Flee youthful lusts. If you, young people, if you are going to exercise yourself under godliness, you must flee youthful lusts. That's different to flirting with youthful lusts. Don't flirt with youthful lusts. Don't hang around youthful lusts. If you get around something and it stirs a youthful lust, you're not told to just hang around a little while. God said, you better run. Run? That's what flee means? That, that's not a casual walk away. That's, you better run. You better run. Stop messing around with things that stir those youthful lusts. There's a whole lot of stuff on social... Look, it would be really good if we could just get rid of social media. But it's not going to happen. So you're just going to have to flee. Well, I'm connected with a lot of people. Is it worth it? It's just, there's just some things you're going to have to flee from. Next exercise, notice. And the next exercise, verse 22. So we've got flee in verse 22. Then we've got follow. Follow what? So we've got flee useful us, follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace. Let me make this statement about righteousness, faith, charity, and peace. You're told to flee some things, but then you're told to follow some things. All those things are constantly getting away from you, and that word follow means pursue. And if you don't keep actively pursuing, they'll actively leave you. But, but, I, but I had righteousness last week. Yeah, but if you don't keep exercising yourself under godliness, righteousness isn't going to be there next week because you're gravitating to unrighteousness because that's what we do. We, 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 we all do that and we never get beyond that. And if, if we're going to have righteousness, you've got to go after it. You've got to hunger and thirst after righteousness. Enough of this passive Christianity. Christianity isn't supposed to be passive. It's supposed to be aggressive and we're supposed to aggressively exercise ourselves under godliness. The last one is verse 23. Avoid, I love this as a pastor, this is a fantastic verse. But foolish and unlearned questions, avoid. You ask me a dumb question, I'm just not going to answer it. Oh, you, get, you ask so many stupid questions. Foolish questions. Why? They, well, they just, they just promote ungodliness. And uh, they just promote strife. And There's some exercises for you. Study. Shun. Flee. Follow. And avoid. The Christian life is not complex and complicated. We make it so, but it is not. However, it is extremely difficult and hard. Let's make some application and I'll close. Two applications and I'll finish. Applications and warning. Notice verse um, 3 and verse 4. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3. Here's, here's why you will not exercise yourself under godliness. Now, exercise is hard work, it's labor. Verse 3, therefore, thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. If you are going to be a vessel that's meet for the master's use, if you're going to exercise yourself under godliness, 
Now, I've got two girls, precious girls. Uh, one's, one's 19, one's 17. They grew up hearing this. Take a straw. Get a straw. Suck it up. It's just unfair, Dad. It is. Here's a straw. Uh, the, the Christian life's not easy. We're, we're, we're told very plainly, Paul says to Timothy, Timothy, just endure some hardness. And this is why Christians quit. This is why Christians, a lot of Christians are not, never get to a place where they meet for the master's use. It's, they don't endure hardness. Why don't they do endure hardness? Well, I think it's they have the wrong expectations of God. Let me, let me remind you of this. If you don't already know, uh, let me tell you this. God doesn't owe you anything. He does not owe you anything. You owe him everything. And you say, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, to study. I'm going to shun. I'm going to avoid. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And then you have this presumption and you have this expectation that God's going to do this. He may not. And he doesn't have to. He doesn't owe you anything. But you still owe him an exercise of godliness that he might use you. You're just going to have to... In Endure some hardness. And then the next thing in verse 4 is entanglement. You know why people don't exercise? You know why people don't go to the gym? They're too busy. They've just got too much going on. You know why you don't exercise yourself under godliness? You've got too much going on. You've got so much going on in your social life and your work life. You don't have time for the Bible. You don't have time to be at church Wednesday night. You don't have time to be at prayer meeting. You don't have time to be at street witnessing. You don't have time to be at letterboxing. You just don't have time. Because you're too entangled. And you will not exercise when you're too busy. Talking about a vessel that's meet for the master's use. I think of Peter, and I mentioned this this morning in our panel. I'll make this statement, I'm finished. Peter, the Apostle Peter, he did some things for God, didn't he? Wow. Cut a man's ear off. You ever cut a man's ear off? For Jesus. <laughs> I felt like it, but I've never done it yet. He did. He, he, cut, a man's, he cut a man's ear off for Jesus. He did that. He talked a big game. I'll go, I'll go with you to the death. But I tell you what happened was, up in that upper room, where they were just being still and just waiting and being obedient, God filled that man and Peter stopped doing things for the master and then the master took the man and started using him. And we see a man that stood at Pentecost and saw 3,000 men saved, 3,000 people saved. We see a man that was used to pen two books. Do you see the difference between doing something for the master and the master using you? You can sing in the choir. You can, you can preach, you can, let a, you, you can go to the mission field, you can let a box, you can do all sorts of things for the master, being a dirty vessel. But it's a whole different story, you being a vessel that's meat for the master's use and he filling you, taking you and using you for his honour and his glory. Let's close in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, just thank you, my Lord, for your kindness and grace. Please help us, Lord. Help me. And Lord, would you be just be pleased to help each and every heart and soul that's here. Help us, Lord, to see the need in our own lives and our own personal responsibility in this thing. God, help us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.